Before I get into the details, I want to explain why I'm telling this story. There is a lot to be changed in the world of horses. Horses don't have enough freedom of movement, don't get the nutrition they need, and they suffer a great deal of unnecessary pain from bits. I believe that many mistakes are made because people don't realize the impact of their actions. By explaining this as clearly as possible, I hope we can improve the welfare of horses. I'll start with the bit problem, as this is easiest to address. Because the bit lies in the cavity of the mouth, it's out of sight. Regrettably, it's also, to a large degree, out of mind. People don't give enough thought to what a bit does in the mouth of a horse. I still remember a riding lesson I had years ago. It was on a very forward horse. I had to rein him in so hard all the time that I could scarcely move my fingers when the lesson was over. So much did it hurt. I didn't think for a moment about what the poor horse must have felt, despite his attempt to tell me. Similar situations arise so often that we give them no thought. For example, bitted horses often open their mouths. They have a good reason to do this, but to understand why, we have to know what's going on inside the mouth. With a model of a skull, we can illustrate what a bit does. To understand why the horse opens his mouth, all we have to do is ask ourselves what would happen if he does not open his mouth. Because of the hinge effect of a jointed snaffle, when tented up by traction on the reins, the joint will hit the roof of the mouth. By opening his mouth, the horse can avoid this happening a second time. But there are also other ways to escape from the pain. In order to explain, I'll use the chair example. We've all sat on chairs like this one. The manufacturer had a great sense of design, but not of comfort. This chair hurts your back. On chairs like these, you can't sit back for more than one minute. You have to wriggle about all the time. You first lean on one shoulder, then the other one. Then you lean on a spine. Why do you do this? You do it to limit the pain by constantly changing its location. It would hurt even more if you didn't shift about. Horses feel the threat of the bit against their pellets all the time. They cannot distribute the pain, but they can put something, their tongue, between the bit and the pellet in the hope of lessening the pain. Sadly, even this strategy is not entirely successful, as the tongue is one of the most sensitive organs in the body. You often hear riders complain that their horse puts his tongue over the bit. This problem can be solved immediately by removing the bit. Unfortunately, few riders reach this conclusion. Instead, the market responds incorrectly by offering various tools that supposedly solve the problem, but which only mask the symptoms and do nothing to remove the cause. I will not list all the devices but I'll take the spoon snaffle as an example. With such a bit, a horse cannot put his tongue over the bit, but it does not stop the pain. The double broken snaffle doesn't hurt the pellet, like the single broken snaffle does but it can still hurt the lower jaw. Not many people know that the bars of the mouth on which the bit presses are as sharp as a knife edge.
When the rider pulls the reins, the bit is pressed against the gum over this knife edge. With a single broken snaffle, it's no different. Not all horses have the same size of tongue. Usually, the tongue is wide enough to spread like a blanket over the bars of the mouth and cover them. That can make it even worse, because the tongue is now pinched between the bit and the knife edges. By opening the mouth, the tongue is given more freedom to move, and the horse will strive to lift the bit off the bars using his tongue. But this now results in constant movement and deprives the rider of steady contact. The rider now applies greater pressure on the reins. The horse, in turn, responds by opening his mouth even wider or putting his chin on his chest. Most riders notice something's wrong if a horse opens his mouth, but rather than find out why, the horse is literally silenced with a tight noseband and the problem is considered solved. But the reason the horse opened his mouth was pain and the pain is still there. The horse no longer opens his mouth because he can't. It's a sad irony that many of us dream of being able to speak with our horses. But when the horse tries to tell us he is in pain, we silence him with nosebands. bands.